I love my deen and I love my community and I love my people. And I know that my people have the best of hearts and they've got beautiful qualities. But when I look and I look at the way that we're living, you know, it breaks my heart to see that we've left the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We've left the best example for the life of what? For the life of gangsters, man. And I think to myself, that when's it going to end? When are we as a community going to pull up and wake up and see that yeah, not only are we destroying ourselves, not only are we giving a bad image towards our deen, but we're actually killing each other. We're literally killing each other. And for what? For what? I don't understand. Why? Because you watch Scarface, then now you want to follow him. You know, one day I was watching the making of it, yeah? And even in the making, they're saying that Al Pacino, he didn't even know where to place his hand on the rifle. He ended up burning his hand. And we believe it. Even Tupac Shakur, when he was offered a role to play a Muslim gangster, he says, there's no such thing. Because I ain't going to play no gangbanger who's a Muslim. There ain't no such thing. How can he be Muslim and a gangster at the same time? Well, poor Tupac, he didn't come to the area. He didn't come to Punch Bowl and to Bankstown and to Auburn and to Granville and Greenacre. Full of them. Brothers walking around with egos the size of mountains. You know, one of the Mashaykh, he says, it's amazing. It's amazing. How can the person that traveled through the passage of urine twice, how can this person still have pride in his heart? How? I look at young kids, young kids, 14, 15, 16, they aspire to be what? Not doctors and lawyers, not mashayikh and scholars and ulama, but to be gangsters, 15 years old, and he's already got a tattoo, and he starts off nice and pretty, starts off with a tattoo of his mum's name. How cute. And then before you know it, he's covered from head to toe. The Prophet of Allah cursed the one that gets the tattoo and the one that does the tattoo. The Prophet of Allah cursed them. And I'm not speaking about the one who's repented. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive. But what are we chasing? What are we aiming? This thug life. My brothers and sisters, do you really think this is real? Do you think that's living? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دَنْكَ the one that stays away from the remembrance of Allah. The one that stays away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one that chooses a life other than the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for him is a miserable life. You watch a couple of movies or maybe you watch a couple of songs, you know. But you don't know the truth of these people's lives. They're miserable. They're miserable. Wallahi, they're miserable. I see young brothers. They've left their mothers and they've left their fathers. You know, if they've left their families, what? You've sold your family for who? For who? For these little thugs? You think these people are friends, Zachi? When you go to jail, yeah, you'll see then how true your friends are. Yeah? When this comes out, no one for no one, Habib. No one for no one. Brother, I'll take a bullet for you. Brother, sit down, please. Stop kidding yourself. Nah, brother, he's my brother. He's my khayyeh. Wallahi, your real brother. The only brother you will ever have is the one that calls you away from haram. Your only true brother is the one that calls you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These people who go around, you know, hurting each other and putting it on each other. I take an oath by Allah. We only harm. We only shoot. We only stab. We only put it on the ones that we know he can't do anything about it. We know he can't do anything about it. That's why we always ask, who is he? Who's his brothers? Who's he connected to? Ah, he's a nobody. Then this comes out and this comes out. And then mashallah, you're a jaban, you're a coward. That's what you are. Wallahi, you're a coward. A real man. A real man is a man that serves his community. A real man is a man that gives back to his people. A real man is a man that serves his wife and serves Allah and serves his deen. Not someone who harms, sells filth. We live a life that's closer to the life of animals, bro. Selling drugs, poisoning the community, poisoning innocent people. And you're making a living off it. Why? So that at the end of the week, at the end of the month, look at me. I'm on the Greek islands and I'm here and I'm there and taking photos. Wallahi, for you is a miserable life. For you is a miserable life. You're not happy. And you know that you're not happy. But we love it. We love the image. We love it. Now, even the sisters. Wallahi, even the sisters now. Everyone wants an ex-bad boy. You want an ex-bad boy, sister? Now, nah, alhamdulillah, look, he's got a couple of tattoos. But now he's repented, mashallah. He's repented? Fine. When two, three years later into your marriage, sister, your, your cute ex-bad boy, you know, husband gets knocked or gets killed, or you find him, you know, cheating with one of his blasts from the past, then go and spend the rest of your nights crying. Wallahi, my brothers, forgive me, you know, I'm, 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 I'm frustrated. Wallahi, I'm burning. I'm burning. When is this going to stop?
When are we going to pull up? When are we going to come back to our deen and start living humble lives? Because wallahi, once you enter into your grave, all your friends and your cars and your women and your money, Habibi, that's all gone. That's all gone. This has got to stop.